Okay, so how does data science fit into growth? Okay, um, a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about here is really gonna be also about how we think about companies when they come to pitch to us, right? So when a company comes and talks to us about their, their growth, um, you know, typically what'll happen is they'll show us some sort of top level, top, some slide that looks really great and they'll be like, oh look, it looks awesome. But of course it looks awesome. If it didn't look awesome, you wouldn't bother showing it to us. Um, but the question is like, what's going on underneath? What are the guts of this thing? Um, there's some sort of like a ma macroscopic growth analytics that we end up doing in partnering with our companies to help figure that out, um, to figure out what are the drivers of that growth. There's um, this whole sort of other area, which I'm terming here as like micro growth analytics, which is like microscopically optimizing your product. So this is like A-B testing. This is like, you know, piecing together your sort of email communication strategy with your users, right, in terms of managing them through their lifetime and getting them to come back. I'm not really gonna talk about that today. A lot of people talk about this stuff, so. I feel like it gets covered plenty. Oops. Okay, so here's a concept. Accounting for MAU growth. Okay, so, so the key thing here, MAU here is like monthly active users. Um, so the graph on the bottom is an example of a company whose MAU is growing at 5% per month. Okay, looks great, right? 5% per month. Now, that, you know, that's something that some company could come in and show us and they'd be like, oh look, we're growing super fast. So the notion here is we actually developed a framework at Facebook to break down this growth so that we can sort of understand the components of it because this sort of top line figure can be hiding all sorts of stuff underneath, right? Um, so in order to like give you a sense of what that is, um, this formula here actually kind of explains this. So this basically says the MAU to, you know, tomorrow or next month or something, let's say next month, is the MAU today, right? Uh, plus whoever was new, right, you added people, um, plus some resurrected people. So those are people that you didn't quite add. They were here before in the past, but were not here this month, right? but came back. And then you lost some people, which is the churned, right? Cool. Um, the bottom one says the MAU today, well, if they're here today, tomorrow they either come back, they're retained, or they don't come back and they're churned, right? Easy definitions, okay, cool. Now, the thing is that here are two examples. These two examples down here actually both produce the same result on the first page. Both of these here will produce 5% growth month over month, but they're really different. Okay, so the one on the right, on, on the left, I guess, um, when you were facing it, the low churn, low acquisition case is a case where there's a lot of resurrection, that big red chunk. Okay, so it's like bringing back a lot of users who have been gone in the past. Very low churn and very little new, okay? So it's clear what to do there, right? We just should just ramp up the new users. We should buy them maybe. Maybe we should spend some money on advertising. Maybe we should be you know, aggressively pushing the users to refer their friends into the system, right? Because we're not getting a lot of new users here and we're also not losing a lot of users. So we're not stretching our users sort of to their point of leaving in terms of um, aggressively trying to push them to you know, recruit more people. Um, so that's, that's the notion on the, on the one on the, the low churn case. And the other case, um, this case looks very different, right? So in this case, you have a whole bunch of new users every month, a whole giant chunk of them, but the following month, they all fall out. That's what that big churn thing is about, all right? And there's that little bit of resurrected, which is that little bit of red on top. Um, now that looks really different, right? So, so in this case, right, we probably shouldn't keep buying users or aggressively trying to get more users, right? Because if we just get all these users, they're all just gonna fall out. Not very good, right? Um, in this case, the thing to work on is not getting more users, it's clearly fixing the churn problem, right? And not worrying about the new. So, so the thing is that like the, the underlying, you know, so remember that both of these produce the same end result in terms of MAU growth. And the point here really is just that it can be massing different things. And it's to your service to like, it's, it, it does your self credit to like understand your own growth. Once you have a product that sort of gets some users, you need to understand, okay, if that number is growing, is that it? Or is there more to it, right? Is there are they sticking around? Are they not? What are the sort of dynamics driving it? Okay. Um, in a, I just mentioned the thing here. Um, the, the area typically, so, you know, I see a lot of consumer companies. This area here above the line, divided by below, below the line, is typically around just, just larger than one, right? It's very normal for sort of a, a consumer company to be sort of losing some users, getting some users, and for it to kind of balance out and be slightly positive. So there's, there's some slight growth, right? Um, if you think about why that's the case, right? That, the reason why that's the case is because in some sense, when you make a consumer app, you, you know, your ability to compel the user to come back is not so high. You can't force them, right? You can't go over there and be like, hey, 
knock on his door, kick him into your app. So like they tend to, there's a natural sort of churn. Um, you know, the contrast to that is something like subscription revenue. So you can actually use the same concept with regards to subscription revenue. Um, so um, MRR is, uh, is monthly recurring revenue. So if you look at like a SaaS business, right, they, they make money by, by having a subscription product that another business pays them for on a monthly basis. Or if you're like Spotify, you have recurring revenue, right? Um, you can do the same thing with recurring revenue, right? The recurring revenue in the next period is the recurring revenue in this period plus new recurring revenue, um, which is a new one. Expansion is like people who were already paying for your thing but are now paying more, right? So if you're like Slack, right? Um, one month the customer is paying you for 10 seats, the next month they're paying you for 12, right? So it expanded by $2. So that's expansion. Churned, the customer falls out, right? Um, contraction is the opposite of expansion. So that's, you know, I was buying 10 months from you last, buying 10 seats from you last month, and this month I'm buying eight seats from you. So I contracted by two, right? So that's contraction. <coughs> um, and you can see, you can graph the same thing here. So on the left um, is an example of one, right, where there's a whole lot of churn and con uh, of cancellation and contraction of, of, of um, subscription revenue. On the right, there's very little. Th these are actually two real examples. I won't tell you which companies they are. Uh, the one on the right is actually in our portfolio. The one in, on the left is not. Um, but you know, we, we saw them. Um, but this is what, yet again, one of these examples. You know, when you're looking at your subscription revenue, you want to have a sense of like, okay, okay, so I spend all this you know, sales team and bandwidth trying to acquire customers. Do they stick around? You know, do they stay above the line? Or do they start falling out below the line? Are you, are you losing them? Um, cool. Um, so um, our general partner, um, Mamoon, actually made a term for this. He called it the quick ratio. The one on the right is 4.5x. The one on the left is 1.6x. 